Last year was Will Power's first year in 17 years that he hadn't won a race, at least a race in a season. That is a thing that bugs him. It annoys him. And Will Power is about to put that statistic beyond, if he can, this year. But it's Felix Rosenquist who gets a great start in the Acura Grand Prix of Long Beach. The Maya Shack Honda leads them down the front straight. The Fro Show with the jump. Watch the yellow and red car of right Alex right Pelot right looking right three right wide, but Will right Power right to the outside. Right right Power right sweeps right around. Right and gets Rosenquist in turn one. They get through turn one fine. Now it's the fountain side by side. Doesn't normally work here. Christian Lundgaard slotting in behind Scott Dixon. Being smart about it here. So far, the fireworks have not happened. But up front, that's exactly what Rosenquist told us. He wasn't going to challenge too hard. I think, you, again, you got to be so careful to let Will Power control the pace. Power now can drive as slow as he needs to to protect his softer Firestone tires. Again, that was already in the playbook for Will Power and his team. Ron Rizuski, as strategist, said if we can get to the front, has more passing back in the field. If they could get to the front for Power, they wanted to take it easy, but they thought being on these alternates was their best shot, Hinch, to be able to jump on the start and get around Felix Rosenquist, and it worked. Wow, Renus VK just absolutely chewed up Alexander Rossi, who might have a problem because the number seven McLaren car looks slow and he immediately came to pit lane. Mindset here, if you think it's gonna go green, get that gap as big as possible. Oh, oh. Christian Rasmussen, heavy into the wall. That looks like the exit of turn four, maybe. Yeah, I think it is, guys. We've seen a lot of drivers clip the exit of turn four, never with these consequences, though. Yeah, it broke mid corner there. First caution of the race and a first big moment we've seen for the rookie. That's Jack Harvey in the Invest Honda for Dale Coin Racing. Damage there. Rasmussen had done well in qualifying. What a shame. Let's have a look what went down. That's a very bizarre. He said it just broke, and I think he means something in the car. I think broke. the left rear suspension looks like the. I wonder if he clipped a wall maybe earlier in the lap. It's a good point. I don't see any mark on the tire, no. though. I didn't see that. But that was a very, very quick turnaround. And Jack Harvey, just an innocent victim there. Nowhere to go. And significant damage to the Dale Coyne yeah, racing it, entry. It's just the back end of the pod. I feel like for Harvey, they could take that up. But yeah, I'm looking at, oh, it looks like the right rear maybe had an issue. Joseph Newgarden led 27 laps in this Acura Grand Prix last year, but did not drive to victory lane. It was a strategy that kind of went upside down and backwards on him. So do they have another chance to right a wrong from last year? We go back racing here at the Acura Grand Prix of Long Beach. And the last two guys to win the last two Indianapolis 500s are first and second in this race. Team Penske and then Andretti. Andretti is Ericsson and Herta. Looking pretty racy down shoreline. We saw Joseph Newgarden almost doing his Indy 500 trick, trying to weave down the front straightaways. We see Lundgaard making a move there on Kyle Kirkwood into turn one. Green lights light up. He tries oh. to stay to the inside, but big defense from Pelot. Can he do the over-under? Nice job from Pelot. Gave the driver no option. Gave Erickson no option. This looks like last year with the oh. Ward and Dixon. Oh. oh. I would have tried to square him up and get him on the run down at turn nine, T, but I don't know. But now Hurt is in the pits. The yeah. driver in the number four. Hold up Newgarden if you can. Through the final sequence of turns. Here comes the hairpin. What's going to happen on the front straight? Is it going to be fairly easy for Newgarden? Or is Simpson going to make life difficult? Say it's easy to request it, tough to execute it. Going the long way around, but has more than enough momentum to clear the eight, or the four rather, sorry, before he gets into turn one. Townsend, as you can imagine, after that round of pit stops, Joseph New Newgarden kind of wanted to reset the field, so he asked Tim Sendrick, hey, help me understand how what the playing field looks like right now. And he said, Dixon is ahead of you, but he is on such a big fuel save. He has 104 seconds of push to pass, and he probably can't use any of it for the rest of the race. So Newgarden slowly making his way there. Hinch, my question is, Dixon's got almost a three-second lead up the road. Is that a big enough lead to hang on for 19 more laps? 19 laps is a lot of laps, Marty. I don't know. The gap in lap time we're seeing between these two, you just saw it on that graphic. He's really having a save here. Be patient. Herder's got 44 on his butt behind him. Then Newgarden is struggling 
in dirty air to get that rear down force. He's right here now. And behind him, only we two. We do like a 52 to finish, round 52. Only two seconds behind this guy we ride with is Colton Herder, who has 20 more seconds of push to pass the New Garden. I to say, Dixon's getting off the corners extremely well. Hey, Townsend, so why did Tim Sendrick add Colton Herder to that conversation? He has cut almost three seconds from third to second on Joseph Newgarden. That's why they're kind of focused behind almost as much as they are up front. 15 seconds left for Newgarden. He does not use it on that run. Oh! I thought he was going to send it. So impressive that Scott Dixon is able to still hit that number despite three, four, five seconds of push to pass used every single lap. He's holding on, but for how much longer can he hold on? Look. Because traffic's coming into oh. play. And Kiffin Simpson had a really close call there. Stingray Rob having a look in that gold and black car. And then you've got Nolan Siegel, a rookie. Santino Ferrucci in the AJ Foyt car. 11 laps to go, and this is framing up to be dramatic all the way to the end. 10 laps. Yep, you've got rookie Kiffin Simpson, then Nolan Siegel in the red white car, Santino Ferrucci, New and Newgarden stalls in the hairpin. Oh my goodness, Herder and Pelo just stopping. Unbelievable development as Dixon now trying to get through this traffic going by Santino Ferrucci. Here's a replay of what happened to the two. Oh. oh. Hit up the back by Colton Herndon. Don't forget the gearbox actuator is on the right hand side of the gearbox. And you remember in Nashville when we saw this a couple years ago? That's going to be an interesting one for race control to look at, but that's just kind of just kind of rubbing. I mean, it wasn't intentional, certainly. 39 seconds of push to pass for Scott Dixon, 32 for Colton Herta, but Colton, tons of fuel available. He does not have to save anything. Kevin Colton should be about a second a lap faster down the stretch with four to go. Dixon was already racing here at Long Beach in Indy Lights when Colton Herta was born. That's the disparity between these two guys, but there is no disparity in the skill level. These two guys are at the top of their game. There might be a lot of a couple of decades between them in terms of their time on the planet, but this is going to be a phenomenal final two miles. Here we go. Dixon versus Herder. Two Honda powered cars. Chip Ganassi racing up against Andretti you Global. Everything you got now. Use everything you got is the call. Talk about good news from your box. Mike Hall telling Scott Dixon, burn some gas, go for it. Lay down a flyer to close this thing out. I still can't believe. Say, like, how does he do it? Even Scott Dixon. I shouldn't be surprised, but this one was one of the tallest orders I've ever seen to save that much fuel, keep that pace, still have the ability to burn the push to pass when needed, and boy, did he need it over this last stint of the race. Absolutely remarkable. If Scott Dixon can hang in there for the length of this back straight to turn nine, he is as good as home. Here it is, turn nine. You know, he's laid back. He takes everything in his stride, but he is very intense inside that helmet. Scott Dixon, it took him nine tries to win here at Long Beach. He's had podium since, but he's gonna go back to the winner's circle. Scott Dixon wins the Acura Grand Prix at Long Beach in the most improbable way. And I can tell you that one of the early backers of his career, Sir Colin Giltrap, recently passed away in the early days of this week. And that's Scott with a heavy heart. He owes a debt of gratitude to that man and so thankful to Sir Colin's support. A lot of New Zealand motorsport fans have heavy hearts as well. So that one will be for Sir Colin Giltrap. And on a day that started with us debating Honda versus Chevy, first race of the season, all Chevy on the podium, Long Beach Grand Prix goes to Honda. They own all three spots with Colton Herta and Palo. What a championship we are up for, guys, down the stretch. This one is going to be fierce. Hi, folks. Lee Diffie from NBC Sports here. If you truly enjoyed what you just watched, you can get more news, interviews, and highlights 
by subscribing to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube page. You can get it all, so go for it.